an old model steam engine which was made circa 1896. This is part 7. Looking back at the first episode, a major problem was that the crank pin was far too thin and even though I pinned it and used Loctite 638 to also pin the crank webs to the crankshaft, the overall strength is still insufficient. In this episode I reassemble the engine and see if it runs, like it must have done once upon a time in 1896. In this clip from the first episode you can see what the problem is. The crank pin is moving around in the crank webs and it's also a very small diameter so it doesn't really support the crankshaft in any way. I wanted to get the engine to run as it did when it was made but I think after this episode I'm going to make a new crankshaft and a new eccentric because they are really bad. And if I don't do that, then the engine isn't going to run for very long before it just gets thrown in a corner, probably where it's been for most of its life. What I'm doing here is drilling a hole 1 16th of an inch in diameter in the flywheel boss, and I'm going to thread this 6BA to take a 6BA bolt. And before anybody writes in, yes, I am aware that 1 16th of an inch is a little bit small for the tapping size, of 6BA, but it's okay if you're careful, and don't forget gun metal is a soft metal. The first thing to do using a needle file is to deburr the hole, because it didn't look very good with a burr all the way around the edge of it. And then I cleaned up the entire boss using a piece of Scotch Brite to remove the chuck marks. Here's a cut down and chamfered 6BA bolt I'm going to use to hold the flywheel to the crankshaft, and here it is being screwed into position but not all the way through the hole. The next part of the job is to fit the flywheel on the end of the crankshaft and tighten this little bolt. It's still a bit long, but it will do for now. The crankshaft is a major problem on this engine. In my opinion, it should be a quarter of an inch in diameter, the crank webs should be made from steel, and the crank pin should be more substantial than it is. It's far too thin to support the rest of the crankshaft. And then, of course, there is this thing. This is the eccentric. It's a very bizarre construction. But you have to remember that this was made not in a workshop, but in a railway signal box where the builder worked. I'm sure he did his best with the tools that he had. The first thing I'm going to do, though, is clean off all the solder and get it back to something at least like bare metal. Once I'd removed all the solder, I heated the eccentric strap and then levered it apart with a screwdriver. It's a very strange construction, and it was held in place to the crankshaft with a very small steel wedge tapped against the crankshaft in an area that had been filed flat. I didn't want to fit this small wedge, it didn't allow for much adjustment, so what I'm doing here is cleaning the face of the eccentric sheave using a needle file to take it back to bare metal, in my scrap box I found a piece of phosphor bronze where the hole wasn't in the middle. It was perfect for the job, so I parted off a piece and clumsily soldered it to the eccentric. I brushed away the excess solder before doing this next bit. I'm drilling another 1 16th of an inch diameter hole to allow me to thread it 6BA for a 6BA machine screw, which will allow adjustment of the eccentric relative to the valve position. While I'm doing this job, I'm thinking, this is not going to work, it's horrendous. And all the time in my head, I'm formulating a much better fix for this engine. But for the moment, I'm staying where I am. I want to return it to the way it was, well, more or less, in 1896. This collar is phosphor bronze, and it was quite difficult to thread it. But by cleaning the tap and dipping it periodically in a pool of oil on the bench, only a small pool of oil, everything was fine and I got a very clean thread. Here you can see the approximate position where the eccentric fits on the crankshaft. I was a bit concerned about the next part, soft soldering this old piece of steel to the brass and it was very difficult, the solder didn't want to stick to it and the strength was very poor. Without having a massive blob of solder in this position, which is the way it was originally made, I think. There was going to be no strength. 
And now it's top tip time. A good way of soft soldering steel to copper or brass is to tin the steel with silver solder. I use tenacity number no. 5 flux when doing things like this. It's really good for silver soldering steel. And once I did that, the solder joint was quite strong. And it was still a bit lumpy, but not as bad as the previous incarnation. Once again, in my opinion, to make this engine into a serviceable item, it needs a proper eccentric, and things need threading, not just soft soldering, into position. Having said that, it does seem to work. I've connected the air and checked the timing, which is not perfect. The first thing I'm going to do though is oil every part that moves. Here I'm refitting the connecting rod pin that goes through the crosshead. Everything's a bit rattly around this area and parts don't fit together very well. But relative to the crankshaft, these parts should be okay. What I'm doing here is setting the timing by moving the slide valve into the right position. I'm using a bit of guesswork with this, but I think it should be okay. Time for a compressed air test. Is it going to work? <laughs> oh dear. As you can hear by my laugh, I really didn't think it was going to work and it took me completely by surprise. And it works very well indeed. It doesn't knock, it doesn't bang, but the crankshaft is still very weak and it's wobbling about around the area of the crank pin. I'll be running it at various speeds, including some fairly fast speeds, because I want to see whether it breaks. The timing is correct. When I place the engine on a piece of cardboard, because my workbench is a soundboard, you can hear how quiet it is. This quiet running is nothing to do with the mechanical condition of the engine. I've got the valve timing 100% perfect, and the reciprocated masses are being cushioned by early admission of the air. In this clip you can clearly see what the problem really is. Look at the crank webs moving, they shouldn't do this. The crank pin is too small to support the crank shaft. Here I'm moving the position of the flywheel closer to the bearing block in an attempt to make the crank shaft more rigid, but it's not working. Here I'm re-tightening the pinch bolt, locking the flywheel in position. Just to recap, this engine was built by a man in a signal box in 1896. And as a tribute to the man who made the engine, I thought I would write the date on the piece of cardboard. Then I thought, well, building this without machine tools must have been difficult. So I added a couple of exclamation marks. Whenever I test run miniature steam engines, I run them really fast because if they work at a very high speed, generally they work okay at lower speeds. But that was not the case with this engine. And it didn't help by putting my finger on the flywheel to apply more pressure to the weak crank pin, which eventually stopped working, but not for a while. It's starting to knock a bit now, the crank pin's getting worse. 
The steam chest gland was blowing, so I repacked it with a small amount of graphited yarn. The piston rod also needs packing, but I cannot get a spanner to fit the gland nut as it's too close to the crosshead guides. So for the time being, I left it as it was. The crank pin and the crankshaft is getting really wobbly now. Because it's a steam engine, it still works. And that's it for me, but it's not really the end of the series. I've had a word with James Evans, who owns the engine, and we've decided that a few modifications, including a new crankshaft, etc., will be fine. That's it from me. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.